I look at real estate. That's why I told you that story. The same way, I believe that there's a misperception in real estate as to what it takes to be successful in real estate. And I believe that a part of it, a big part of it, are not the real estate, is not the real estate knowledge you have. How many people do you know that really know real estate that haven't fulfilled their dreams in real estate, that are really knowledgeable, but they're not there? How many people do you know who work night and day in real estate and outside real estate, but still haven't achieved the dream they had the day they got into real estate? Think about it. Is that you? Did you have a bigger dream, a bigger aspiration when you got into real estate than where you are now? I'd like to talk to you about my view of if that's true, if that's you, how you can get there. You think about every single thing, take real estate, every single thing that's going on in real estate, like the, the process for listing and selling a home, let's take that. That's a pretty straightforward process, right? Once you list a home, what do you do? Is it any different in Minnesota? Do we put up a yard sign? Do we put it in MLS? Do we run it up on websites? We do a lot of pretty standard things. And I'm not saying standards bad, but pretty much the industry, that's what we do, right? So you look at that process, that whole thing, every little teeny bit of what you do, and you think, how could I do it differently better? How could I do it differently in a way that would do what? Help my seller sell faster at a higher price because isn't that what every seller wants? So how do you think that way? Well, it's pretty simple. No, it's not pretty simple. It took me a lot of years to figure this out. Bigger, smaller, faster, slower, opposite, different, and gone. Got that? Bigger, smaller, faster, slower, opposite, different, and gone. So what you do is you take every single little component of whatever it is you're analyzing, and you quickly run through your mind, what if I did it bigger? What if I did it smaller? What if I did it faster? What if I did it slower? What if I did it just the opposite? What if I did it different, like a different color? Or what if it was gone? What if it was gone, this whole process was gone, this process for selling homes that we now follow because everybody has for 75 years? including my dad when I was 12 years old, the basic process. And I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just saying it's been the same process since I was born. Well, I look at that and I say, what if it just disappeared? There was no such process at all. And I couldn't do anything that was currently being done. I knew, I knew that. What would I do? How would I do it like it was gone and just make it up myself? Oh my gosh, you might come up with a new way to sell homes. Everybody goes in and sells a shinier version of a Ford. And what I mean by that is we compete against each other by saying we're more experienced, we're with a better company, we have a bigger network, all these things, we have more knowledge, and that's cool, that's good. But what we don't do is go in and say to a seller, I have a better process for selling your home. A process, actually, the, if, forget me, you see the sellers weren't listing with me, what were they listing with? my process, my idea. And I thought, wow, that's a concept. Actually come up with a Mercedes so that everybody else is out there with shinier Fords trying to look shinier. And I should go in with a Mercedes where I say my process for selling your home is certainly likely to sell your home faster and at a higher price. And again, isn't that what all sellers want? Faster and at a higher price with a good experience? Yes. So the next thing I did when dad shut me off on that is I came up with what I call my 29-day fast sale plan, my 29-day fast sale plan. Now, what that was is very simple. I simply compressed, and I told sellers, I'm compressing six months of effort and six months of marketing into 29 days. I'm going to do what all these other realtors will do in six months. Look, and I showed them a 29-day chart. Here for 29 days are the things I'm going to do. Look at how much I committed to three hours a day Doing what? Calling and working on trying to do what? Sell their home. In writing. Time is acid to the price of a home. Time is acid to the price of a home. I've said that so many times to sellers over the course of my life. Time is acid to the price of the home. Is it not true? Same home, same neighborhood, same economic conditions, same list price, same everything. It's on the market three days. It's on the market 300 days. In which scenario is it going to sell for more? Three days, you know that. At 300 days, the buyer's looking at the list price and saying it had to be overpriced or there must be something wrong. They're going to pay less for the home. And so I went into the seller and I said, my 29-day fast sale plan, me compressing all of my effort in 29 days, 
that is more likely to do what? Get more buyers in here faster to sell your home before it starts doing what? Declining in value. So, I'd like you to think when we leave this room today about process, about what you could do, little things you could do to play with the process and actually go to sellers not only with your better, but a better process for selling their home. Does that make sense? So you get a listing appointment, right? So the first thing you do is, well, I don't have to tell you that, Harvey McKay, the McKay 66, how can you not do your due diligence on the seller? You want to know the seller like better than he, know, he or she knows themselves. You know that. That's creative, but you got to know that. But here's the next thing I do. I have a personal brochure delivered to the seller before the appointment. Now, what's different about what I do, what's creative, is that most people have a professional brochure delivered if they have anything delivered at all that talks about how amazing they are in their company and all that, and I do not do that. I want the seller to get to know me, to get to know me before I arrive. And so it's got photos of my family and my kids and my values, and my values really are top on my list. When I'm in a big room like this, only I'm right up here in a box, and somebody's up here talking about me, as Robin said, I really do want them to say, if they don't say anything else about I was great in real estate or great in this or good in that or whatever, I do want them to say that this guy was one heck of a father to his kids, an amazing husband to Roseanne, and as Harvey says in his book, he was somebody you could call at 2 a.m. in the morning if he was your friend. I work at that. So, so the bottom line is I want people to get to know me and I talk about my values in that brochure. In that brochure, I have an insert and it has a lot of recommendations in it. Now, what's interesting is people say, well, Greg, I haven't sold. You, you have 100, 150 recommendations slid in there. These are just people I know. They're not necessarily people I sold homes for. They could be, but they're just people who say, this is really a good guy. He's really a great person. If you're thinking about selling a home or thinking about having a friend, this is a guy you want to get to know. There isn't a person in this room that couldn't fill two or three pages with a hundred of those and have it done in three days. Do you realize how powerful that is to have delivered to a seller this personal brochure that talks about you and has a hundred recommendations in it of people who are saying you're really a great person? So I have that delivered. You never take it yourself. I have that delivered. And I have it delivered with a personal gift. Now, the thing you have to be careful with on the personal gift is you don't want it to be too expensive. You don't want the sellers to perceive that you're trying to buy them. So the personal gift, and you want it to be personal, and by the way, personal means something special to you. Like the two gifts that I've used over 20, 25 years was first Michigan cherry butter. It's amazing, Brownwood Farms, it's Brownwood Farms, you want to, I know you're, you, you could, I could see, write it down, it's Brownwood Farms, it's amazing Michigan cherry butter. I grew up as a water ski instructor on Walloon Lake in northern Michigan, nine miles from Petoskey. I really got to love Michigan cherry butter. So I. I have that delivered with my personal brochure. It's three bucks. I buy them by the case. And it's just a little note from me that's handwritten that tells that little story. And I thought you might enjoy this. My other gift that I use a lot are fresh and go toothbrushes. Now that sounds kind of corny, but fresh and go toothbrushes, these are the toothbrushes that have the, have the toothpaste in the handle and you just twist a little thing and when you're traveling, they're really great. I know you're smiling and laughing, but it's such a cool gift. And whenever I get over and I give those, sellers always say, that's so cool, I've never seen one of those. And I say, well, you know, if you're ever out around and I brush my teeth after every meal, I mean, I carry it with me to lunch, whatever. I'm fortunate that I'm going to be, get to go to the luncheon today and, and Paige has my toothbrush back there and because then I have to get on a plane and travel. So, so I give fresh and go toothbrushes, okay? So, so I have the brochure and the recommendations and the cherry butter of the toothbrush pre-delivered. And now I want to ask you a question. When I get to the home, when I get to the home, do you think the sellers, what do you think this first thing the sellers are going to do? They're going to, number one, thank me for the gift, and they're going to talk a little about that. And the second thing they're going to do is they're going to comment on my personal values in my brochure. A lot of people think buyers just buy homes, and that's not true. They buy a home like this is a functionally nice place to live, but they also buy a neighborhood, a great community to live in. And how many people buy a lesser home in a better neighborhood? It happens all the time and pay more for it. But the other thing they buy besides the home in the neighborhood that a lot of people don't realize is they buy what I call the badge of honor, the badge of honor. A badge of honor is what other people are going to think when they drive up in front of the home, right? It's why we sometimes wear the Maverick socks that we do. You know, when people say, wow, this Greg Haig, maybe he's a maverick, you know, that kind of a thing. So people, 
do what? They get impressed by a home. So I get up in front of the home, get there early, and then what I do, about 10 minutes into it, I call the sellers on my cell phone. So the reason I stand out in front and do this is I call the sellers and I say to the sellers, by the way, you'll notice that I'm out in front on my cell phone, my, suit, my briefcase cell phone. you notice that I'm out in front and I'm out here, I wanted to get here a few minutes early and here's why, because a lot of people don't realize that there's only, you know, the cliche, there's one chance to make a first impression. And I know that when I'm pitching your home to buyers and to other agents, because most sales happen with other agents, when I'm pitching your home to other agents, I tell the sellers, I want to take it in now, I want to get that first impression, I'm taking some notes, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, I'll be to the door right on time. Now remember, I've delivered a personal gift, I've researched the seller so I know all about them, they've got my personal brochure, my recommendations. Have I done something relatively creative by going up in front? And by the way, what I'm doing is true and so can you see how throughout this process what am I doing I'm setting a, myself apart I'm trying to differentiate myself but I'm doing it in a legitimate way because everything I'm doing is absolutely true does that make sense so there's one other thing that I want to throw out as a listing tip and that is this the walkthrough I consider the walkthrough to be the time when you should be getting the listing, when the seller should make their mind up. Before you ever sit down in the living room, before you ever sit down at the kitchen table, the walkthrough is when you want the sellers to say to themselves, I'm listing with this person. This is an amazing person. So here's how you do that. Number one, during the walkthrough, you make sure you've done your pre-research on the sellers, the McKay 66. And it was harder back when Harvey developed it. You didn't have Google the internet. Today it's so easy, you can find almost everything about somebody. And you start building bonds of common interest. And I think you know that. You look for also plaques on the wall and other things. Number two, you drip feed. You drip feed your presentation. You see, that's when they're not expecting it. Rather than waiting to get into the living room and say, okay, now it's time. Here's why I'm amazing and wonderful, why you should list with me. Things like, did you, you probably know, did you ever think about time is asked to the price of the home and a lot of agents will want you to list and commit forever? And I'm not saying in the 29 days that you only list for 29 days, by the way, but, and, and you drip feed to them this process you have and why this process is better. You just talk about it in a natural way when it's not like I, I'm presenting to you why you should list with me. Another one is knowing the neighborhood better. Knowing the neighborhood better. You think, I mean, oh, that's no big deal. Greg, all of us know the neighborhood. No, not like I know the neighborhood. I point out as we're walking through the home, I know everything about the street, the community, the kids. I do my research. I mean, you make 10, 20, 30, 40,000 bucks when you sell a home. This is worth the time. And by the way, once you learn it, you've got it for all the other homes so you can use it over and over. And I have what I call an agent disabler on that, where if I don't get the appointment, I'm sorry, if I don't get the listing and they have other people they're going to interview, I actually give the sellers a sheet of questions about the neighborhood that they should ask the other agents they're going to interview to make sure that they know the neighborhood as well as they should because people buy what? Not just a home and not just a badge of honor, but a neighborhood, right? And I can actually tell sellers, I can convince buyers I can convince buyers to buy just because of this neighborhood. And I don't mean just the basic community. I mean because of the kids and amazing neighbors. You think that's, if you were a seller, would that resonate with you? But then here's the last thing, my walkthrough. My walkthroughs are known as the longest walkthroughs in the history of the planet. I take such copious notes you can't believe it. I have a yellow tablet and page after page. I mean, I'm asking them questions. I'm getting down on my hands and knees at the water heater, you know, where you have the, the little, I'm hoping it's down low so I can get down and look up at the sellers and I'm taking notes of the gallonage and amperage and all that stuff. Why? Because I want the sellers to see that I'm not here to interview for the listing. I'm here to prepare to sell their home. And I want them to feel guilty at the end of the walkthrough if they don't list with me. I hope that I've made a little difference in your life today. I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed this. This is my favorite thing in the whole world doing it in the real estate arena. As I said, as Robin said, I started when I was 12 years old. So I hope I've made a little bit of a difference in your life today in this hour. And I implore you to do the same with the people in your life. Thank you, guys.